Hello, everybody. This is Ryan over at Ryan's Final Destination. Hope you guys are having a great day today. Um, you know, as you guys have seen, we've been doing a lot of series about bands so far. We finished up the Genesis one a couple weeks ago. We finished all the studio albums of Aerosmith, but we still have some more episodes to come with them. And now I have John the Music Nut and Grant Arthur as we talk about a new band. Well, not a new band. They're an old band, but a new band for us to talk about. And it's The Police. Um, so The Police got their start in the late 70s. First album came out in 78. Uh, they're a power trio. You got Sting on the bass and vocals. Uh, you got Andy Summers on the guitar. And... Stuart Copeland on the drums. All these guys were established musicians already. I mean, Stuart was in Curved Air. Um, you know, Sting was playing a bunch of jazz stuff out, and Andy was in some bands as well. Um, Andy was in the, the Animals. That's right. That's right. And Graham, I think Graham Bond, was it the Graham Bond experience? I think he was in that before that. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. But yeah, they were already all established musicians. So it's kind of like a super group, honestly, but they were like kind of low key super group. None of the stuff they were doing was huge or anything. Um, and they were a revolutionary band. I mean, they started off mixing punk and reggae, rock and pop all together. As they went on, they went farther into like new wave and art rock um, to make some really amazing albums. And so today we're going to talk about the first two albums by the police. We got Outlandos de Amor and Regatta de Blanc. Um, and so both of these albums, like I said, are kind of like reggae, a little punk, some rock, pop mixed in. It's just really interesting, a combination of music and uh grant and john and i we're going to talk about our opinions about both of these albums our experiences with them our fa um, favorite tracks etc and if we have a preference of which album we like more than the other um and if you guys have like a particular order that you like these tracks in to feel free to talk about that as well um if not that's fine too but We'll start off with the debut, Outlandos de Amor, which is from 1978. And um, it was pr produced and arranged by the band. Uh, engineers on it were Nigel and Chris Gray. Um, it was, yeah, like I said, it has Andy Summers, Stuart Copeland, Sting on it. Um, and some of the biggest songs on this are So Lonely, Roxanne, um, and Can't Stand Losing You. So how about, John, would you like to start us off? Sure, I'd love to. All right, thanks, Brian. Absolutely. So, so this is Outlaw to Stand More. Outlaws of Love, I believe it means. And mm -hmm. this was from November 78. This is their most energetic album if you were to say which the punk album this is the punk album um x very very good album i'm not going to say this debut is on the level of the pretenders debut or boston's debut or the cars debut but it's pretty it's pretty darn good um first track is one of three tracks on here that are very, very influenced by punk. That's uh, next to you. Very energetic song. The introduction of Sting's very high vocals. Um, I mean, Sting's one of the great, greatest singers. Um, great song. Um, it all works very well. So Lonely was the, this is the next track. That song got played a lot on your album, Orient Rock Stations, for a long time. Uh, better song than Next to You, in my opinion, because it's great mix with the reggae verses and the rock choruses. Works very, very well. Outstanding track. And the next song is Roxanne. This was their first big hit. 
in the United States, discharged at number 32 in the States, although with how big it was on your album oriented rock stations here in the States, you'd think it was a bigger song. It was a very enduring song for a song that just scraped the top 40. Outstanding song. It's very a lot of hooks in it. Um, the chorus is very memorable. Outstanding track. Hole in My Life is the next song. It's more of a mid-tempo song. It's got a darker theme, but it's really cool. Peanuts is the second song. It's more punk. That song kicks butt. Very good. Next two songs are my two favorite songs on the album. And the first one's Can't Stand Losing You. And this is Sting was such a wordsmith back on these albums. And even his early solo albums. Fantastic lyric writer. This is one of his best lyrics in in my opinion, and I can't sing like Sting. Who could? And this is our last goodbye. You don't care, so I won't cry. You'll be sorry when I'm dead, and all this guilt <laughs> will be on your head. Perfect. What a wonderful lyric. And you know that that song's about suicide, but the delivery is so catchy. I love the end because at the end, they just go, I can't, I can't, I can't stand losing. And it goes on and on and on. And then it goes, can't stand losing you. And then it goes right back into the main theme, the main bass line. I think that was a very creative way to end the song. Truth hits everybody kicks ass. It's punk, catchy as sin. Awesome. The vocals, um, the, the rapport between the band is infectious on this one. Excellent track. The next song's Born in the 50s. That song is okay. I think it's the first song on the album that I really wouldn't say is very good to great. It's, it's a decent tune, but I think it breaks momentum. And that momentum is broken more with Be My Girl Sally, which is, I don't know, it's, I, I, think, I think it's a lame song. And then, um, and then when it goes into that poem that Andy Summers is reading in the middle, it reminds me of something from the second half of the Clash's Combat Rock album. Because, <laughs> because that first side of the album kicked ass. And then the second side, it was ghetto defended straight to hell and a bunch of what is this? And, and I love the Clash's um, experimental songs. Like I love Sandinista, but some of the stuff on Combat Rock didn't work. And that's I how agree. I feel about Be My Girl. And Masoko Tonga is the last song. It's part reggae, part very much a ska track. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's got this long ride out. And they didn't play this one live much if they played it at all. But I think it's a great way to end an album. I think a song like that is a good way to end and just take you to take you out, you know. So cool tune. Um, but I really like most of this album. Um, my favorite songs would probably be Two Tits Everybody, Can't Stand Losing You. What would be my number three? Hmm. Probably So Lonely. I'd give this four out of five stars. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, great job, John. Thank you for great review on that album. Um, how about you, Grant? Yeah, great, great review, John. I can't really argue with anything you said. I think you pretty much nailed it. Thanks. But it's funny, though, this, this album, though, was it took they recorded this from January to June of 78, it took them like six months to record this. Hmm. And Miles Copeland, Stuart Copeland's brother was the one financing this. And he would drop by the sessions just to check it out. And I, he wasn't that impressed with what was going on, um, even because, he, you know, he was putting down money. He's the one financing this. Oh, yeah. But when he heard Roxanne, he went, OK. I think you I think you boys have hit on something. And I would have to agree, though, I would have to say that I don't care if I ever hear Roxanne ever again in my life. The whole other rest of the record, I'm fine with. But that, you know, I don't want to hear that again. But the, uh, there were three singles released off this record, Roxanne, 
can't stand losing you and so lonely. Um, and pretty much when this was released, it was pretty much reviewed very favorably. Rolling Stone, though, back in the day gave it like three stars, but they've changed their view on things. They've given it, it's ended up more recent times, the album guide's given it four stars. So, and I think it's right on track. All music, four and a half. Um, smash it, seven out of 10. Sounds, three and a half. I mean, Village Voice gave it when it came out a B plus, which I totally agree. Um, but this album's also been ranked on some of the, the Rolling Stone 500 greatest albums of all time. Oh, it's like 434 it's listed. Um, in the 20, two, 2012 revised edition, it came up to, uh, what did it at? 428. So not that Rolling Stone means jack shit, but it did rank on some of these greatest of all time records. and. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'd put it on that list, but I think maybe some of their later stuff I might, but for what it was, and we're talking 1978. I don't know. It was probably kind of, cause it does bridge that reggae and that punk thing. This album was probably the most raw, an energetic album they ever ever did but then again they're trying to figure out where they were going i mean if you listen to can't stand losing you that is a blueprint to what's coming but what a great track that is like you said john it's all about suicide it's not most the uplifting thing in the world but you can't <clears throat> the impact of that track and if you think about that coming out when it did what else really sounded like that in in 78? Right. I mean, the whole record. I mean, it's very, I don't want to call it punk. Maybe post-punk. I don't know. Because it's it's got punk tendencies, but I don't know if I'd really call it punk. Um, I mean, it's not any more punk than the first Pretenders album to me. True. First Pretenders album came out in 1980. Um, but you can see by the track selection and what they were doing. I mean, Next to You is a great track. So Lonely is a great track. I mean, this is one of those albums. I've been having a real tough time trying to rank tracks because in past videos, we did an Aerosmith video and I couldn't rank anything on that. It was hard to do. This is another one of those records that I could probably rank the top three tracks, but then the other tracks, I'd probably just, they're all equal. I mean, this is easily for me, a four-star record. Nice. I mean, the, the, the police had never put out a bad record. All their records are different. And what I'd like to say, even though this is way different than what came after, Um, it stands on its own. I mean, do I, I, I like the more reggae stuff like on regatta. I think they took it to the next stage and at, the, at that's when I think they really became the police. We'll, we'll talk about that later, but this, you see, just, you just see a little bit of what's to come. But I mean, if you like post-punk and you like, something that I don't think any anybody else is doing at this time. I think this is a great record. I would say the best track is Can't Stand Losing You. And then probably, I mean, I like Roxanne. I just don't ever want to hear it again. Um, but Can't Stand Losing You, I can listen to that track anytime it's on and I never get tired of it. Roxanne's just been beaten down because anytime Sting goes out on tour, plays it over and over. I mean, I'm sure the the masses love that song. I don't need to hear it again. But I'm not going to rate it low because it is a standout track. 
Um, I would say Can't Stand Losing You and then Roxanne and then probably So Lonely. Um, I mean, side one on this record is killer. Peanuts, Next to You, they're all great. I mean, Next to You is a great opening track. You hear that and it just takes you into the record. I mean, it's great. But, you know, Be My Girl, Sally, that's funny. But do I ever really play it? No, I skip it. It's funny the first time you hear it. But Born in the 50s is fine. Truth Hits Everybody's a great track. Uh, Masco Tonga, I don't know. I'm probably butchering the name of it. That kind of falls at the end of the record. That's kind of like, a. I think that's some filler. I, I would say that's the only track that has filler. Because if anyone knows the police, most of these police albums have filler on them. But even though it's filler, it is great filler. I mean, a lot of people look at Zanyata being one of those We lost your sound. Shit, I hit the button. Even though you hear, what did, oh, now I don't know what I was saying. Even though Zanyata is considered to be an album that has a lot of filler, the filler that's on that record hits it out of the park. I mean, I'd love to- We're in my mind, Grant. <laughs> right. But I remember at the time when it came out, it was- kind of hard you know critically uh, uh critically give me the word critically acclaimed well no it wasn't critically acclaimed because they always thought it had a lot of filler but oh, the, so other, would be, um, the great yeah. tracks on it you know far exceeded anything else mm -hmm. um i kind of see that on the next record we're talking about but i mean i don't see that so much on the first record I'm going to give it a solid four, but I do think track 10 is kind of filler, even though it's great. And I love this record. The police never did any wrong in my eyes. Um, four star, a solid four star record. I think it changed a lot of things when it came out. And I can see why they become, they became so popular and they're just brilliant. Such good players and, What's not to love, you know? Yeah. yeah they're one of my 10 favorite bands. There you go, John. That. They're so good. Yeah. Well, thank you, Grant. Excellent thank job. You. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so Outlandos the Amor. I am going to reserve until we get later on in the series, just because we are going to be studying these albums pretty thoroughly. I've heard all of them a ton of times, mm -hmm. but I want to reserve using the word favorite at all until we get further on and we start ranking the albums later on because I don't want to be all over the place. Right. But I will say that this is the album I've spent the most time with by the police, even though I've spent a lot of time with all of them. I just think that for me, this is like one of the greatest debuts. I just love this album so much. Um, yeah, side two kind of varies in quality, but I still like everything on side two a lot. And just the overall tone and energy this album makes up for any variance in quality for me. I mean, you start with Next to You, which is a powerful opener. That's one of the punkiest police songs. I mean, it's pretty aggressive vocal performance by Sting. Cool riff. Um, I love that chorus. That what can I do? You know, that's really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, just a super catchy song. But then you go into So Lonely and holy crap, I love this song. It's one of the catchiest Sting vocal performances ever. I just get it so stuck in my head. Um, that awesome falsetto that he's doing. And um, I love the riff, especially Stuart Copeland's bass playing that. Dum, de, de, dum, de, de, dum. Just great reggae beat there. Um, I don't know. It's just perfect song, in my opinion. It's one of my favorite police tracks. 
Roxanne's another masterpiece. I mean, they jam out. I think this has one of the coolest openings of a song ever. The way that they all come in, especially once Stuart comes in with the bass. That's just really powerful stuff. Great, like, melancholy reggae sounding music. And then Sting's vocal performance is... Um, oh, wait. Did I say Stuart comes in with the bass? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was thinking you were talking his bass drum. Yeah, I yeah. That at first, I meant Sting on the bass. I'm just like getting really into talking about this right now. But yeah, Sting comes in with the bass, and then Stuart's drumming is what I meant to say. Um, but just the rhythm section, super powerful. Um, and Sting's vocals on that one are fantastic too. I mean, kind of dark lyrics to it, um, which are also really well done. Um, Hole in My Life is weird. I like it a lot. Kind of has a strange kind of like Beatles vibe to it, honestly, the riff and stuff, um, the chord progressions and stuff. It's probably my least favorite song on side one, but it's still a really good track. Uh, Peanuts is another great punk song. A lot of energy there. Um, really rocks out. Can't Stand Losing You is probably my favorite song on this album because it's just brilliant. The lyrics are really dark, but also have like a good sense of humor to them as dark as they are. Um, and I just love it musically as well. But this one's really like a lyrical song. It tells a really dark story and it does it while still being really catchy and fun it's it's a warped song you start to see how warped of a sense of humor that the police have as you go further into their albums um born in the 50s i like it's definitely not one of the better tracks on here probably my least favorite on the album um i don't know it's catchy but it's just not quite as memorable as some of the other tracks. I do like Be My Girl. I think the poem and stuff is really funny. I always, I've always enjoyed like the theatrical nature of that part. And the rest of the song is pretty catchy too. It's probably my second least favorite song on the album, but I still really do like it. And Masoko Tonga is badass. I love that song. Like maybe it is filler, but that groove is top notch. It might be filler, but th there's no bad police filler, like I said. Yeah, and it, for me, it's one of my favorite songs on this album. It's right up there with the big singles for me. I just think that is a dark, jammy, reggae beat. They could do that beat for 10 minutes long and I wouldn't get bored of it. And I love Sting's vocal performance, too. Um, just really catchy stuff. I, I see, I hear myself getting that one stuck in my head a lot and singing along to it and stuff. I think it's really cool. Um, so ranking the tracks on here, um, least favorite would be born in the fifties, then be my girl, then hole in my life. Um, after that, probably truth hits everybody. Uh, peanuts, uh, Masoko Tanga, uh, Roxanne, So Lone. Oh, no, no, no. Next to You before Roxanne, then Roxanne, So Lonely, and then Can't Stand Losing You is my favorite. And I'm going to give this album a 4.5 out of 5. Ooh. I really love it. There's not a track on it that I dislike. There's some that I like more than others, but I think it's a really solid album the whole way through and it showed that right off the bat this band was coming in to do business i mean sting was showing that he's already one of the most unique singers and bass players in the market stewart killing it on the drums and andy's doing an amazing job on the guitar they just all killed it on this album and i think that you never get the same energy again from them even though you get great stuff the whole way through their catalog, it's never quite like this. 
Yeah, but they were so, uh, how should I put it? Advanced. They progressed so fast in such a short period of time. I mean, think about it. They progressed faster than the Beatles ever did. You know? You know, and the Beatles made leaps and bounds, but the police, every album was way different and much more progressive than what came before. It was, it, I mean, I don't know what they could have done after synchronicity. Well, obviously they didn't do anything. That was it. It's just, it's just amazing. That's all. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Was no, there absolutely. a band that, that went out the way they did? I mean, right. what else could they have said? Kind of summed it up right there. I think they had, they tried to get back together. And I mean, they, they didn't get along. I mean, I sting at Stewart really didn't like each other, but, um, but you know, they, what else, what else could they say after synchronicity? I mean, and they went out, you know, most popular, just top notch. Yep. They're the biggest band in the world when they, I mean, they never, they never announced that they were breaking up. They just, didn't do anything else after that. Right. In fact, they've yeah. never announced that they were breaking up, I don't think. Right. It's, I think that's, yeah, it's true. Like Sting made the Dream of the Blue Turtles and they did that Greatest Hits album and they um, remade uh, Don't Stand So Close to Me. And, Which is horrible. Oh, uh, yes. Abysmal. Ugh. I hate that. I never listened to that. You know, it's funny. I was, when we were all talking here about the Alana Stan Moore. I, I was thinking to myself, Be My Girl might be my least favorite police song. I'm changing that to the 86 version. <laughs> yes. So to me. That's worse. <laughs> John, you're 100% right. <laughs> yep. Definitely. That's worse. I don't even know why they really, ugh, God, it's just not good. Poorly Should executed. More modern. I mean, which. They're trying. Were they trying to be more modern, even though they I, against yeah. the against that during their career? You know, they weren't following trends. And then I know, all of a sudden, they I did. know Stuart Copeland really didn't play drums on it because I think he was all busted up from a polo thing. Oh, okay, I think I read that. Might too. be all drum machine. Yeah, it's just bad. You should never have done it. I know you need to have something on the greatest hits to fill it out. You've got to, you know, you want to sell it. It was just bad. Poorly executed. Yes. I think. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. Um, so that is the first album, Outlandos de Amor. And then we go into Regatta de Blanc from 1979. <laughs> Once again, um, produced by the police and Nigel Gray. Um, engineered by Nigel Gray. And uh, it says all noises by the police arranged by the police. Um, some of the biggest songs on here would have been message in a bottle and the beds too big without you. Um, cool thing about this album, the copy I have actually is from 1979. It's two 10 inch records with all the songs rather than one 12 inch. Um, which is awesome. It sounds fantastic. And it's a little more compact for my collection. So <laughs> can't go wrong with that. Nice. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. So John, if you want to get started off again. Thank you, Ryan. And I don't know why my video is all of a sudden green. Certainly green is made out of people. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway maybe you've got like a yellow bug light over i don't know or something thumbs up i mean this room is painted lime green but all of a sudden the whole thing went green and i'm wearing a light green shirt i guess that doesn't help matters but anyway for god's a blank or de blanc white reggae this was released in october of 1979 and this is an album where I think they hit it out of the park. There was not a top 40 single on this album. It was the only in the United States, I should say. They got their first number one with Message in a Bottle in the UK. 
Yeah, this was their first album. They didn't have a top 40 hit. And on this album, there's more collaboration between the three band members than there was on Allowing to Stay More. Sting wrote most of the songs on their debut. On this album, Stuart Copeland, I think, has three solo co-writes. And Andy, Sting, and Stuart have co-writes on the, they have co-writes on two or two songs i believe and stewart has three solo solo songs here like they wrote he wrote himself now this album i believe they hit out a part message in a bottle is a fantastic opener and although this didn't chart in the top 40 hit number 57 in the u.s it became an aor staple and it's an excellent track and the next song is the title track, which is excellent. It used to be my ringtone, um, but it's just very fast um, reggae song. It just, it's killer. I mean, and uh, Stuart plays like a monster on this track. It's all right for you, slows it down ever so slightly, but it's still a rocking song. And that song works very well. Bring on the night is slower. That reminds you more of Sting solo stuff. I really love Andy's guitar work on this. To me, if if there was one guitar player that was best known for just bringing the perfect accompaniment to a song, it was Andy Summers. It's not known for writing great riffs and great solos. It's just the intangibles. That little thing he does to bring a song up. I just love his guitar playing in this song. The song is excellent. Sting sings his heart out on it. Death Wish, I don't even know how to describe this song, but I love it to death. Um, and it, a lot of changes in momentum and there's no chorus. It's just a really good groove. And then it gets really uh, fr- a little more connected. A lot more kinetic during the uh what would be the chorus but there's no vocal over it excellent song walking on the moon that's reggae but based the bass line the sparse guitar line stings vocal it just works so well excellent track that song used to get played a lot on aor radio mm-hmm. um on the other, on any other day, is Stuart Copeland's lead vocal. He doesn't sing like Sting, but at the same time, you couldn't picture Sting singing this song either. This is definitely a, a cool post-punk track. It's a lot of fun, cool, cool lyric, great tune. Bed's too big without you. I wish I wrote a song called "The Bed's Too Big Without You." What a fantastic title! Um, but this has, it's like part reggae part dub um song about lost love it's a great song contact that's a Stuart song sting sings it that's a great song too that's more post-punk um more moody during the verses and before it kicks into something more direct in the or i'm sorry during the verses and it gets more direct during the choruses that's a cool tune does everyone stare? That's a Stewart song. And Stewart plays co- I'm sorry, Stewart plays piano at the beginning. And that's a really cool song. I mean, it's a little mellower than the rest of the album. It's very good. And No Time This Time rocks like hell. That is a killer closer. And it was also the B-side to So Lonely, the So Lonely single. Supposedly on this album, they were looking for material and they uh, I believe Bring on a Night was a song from one of Sting's earlier bands that they reworked. And No Time This Time, they they threw on the album as well. But everything here works splendidly. I love this album, five stars. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank John. You. Thanks. Yeah. Um, not much to argue with that. Grant, what do you think? I, I can't argue with anything that John said. Um, 
Yeah, well, as you can tell with the production on this record, they've thrown a little bit more money at the police now. So mm -hmm. it's not quite as raw. This is the album where I think things start to gel. Because when I think of hardcore police, when I think of the police, I think of Message in the Bottle, the production on this, the sound, the instrumentation, this is when everything started to gel. Um, and like you said, Nigel Gray, I really like Nigel Gray's work. And I even like Nigel Gray's work on the album that follows because I think they really, I mean, I like Q Padgham too. Don't get me wrong at all. His work, I think is top notch, but I somewhere, I don't know, in my heart, I kind of had liked this Nigel Gray stuff. Um, but they did release three, four singles from this message in a bottle, walking on the moon, bring on the night and a bed's too big without you. The ratings for this album again. Well, it's funny because all music actually gives this record three stars, but it gave the debut four, which I think's weird. Um, but for the most part, when I look at everything, Rolling Stone gave it four stars. The general consensus is it's a four star record. Like the like like the debut. And I can see that, but I do think this is a much better record than the debut. Um, on the Billboard 200, this got up to 25. I don't think any of the singles charted. I think, isn't that what you said, John? It really didn't do anything at all. Message in a Bottle hit 57 in the okay. States, and that was it. But it did get up to 25 on the Billboard chart. So that's good, right? Um, I mean, this album's where you see they really go into that whole reggae thing. And I just absolutely love it. In fact, Regatta de Blanc, de Blanc means white reggae. Yep. But I do think that this was a more popular album than the one that came before. I mean, each time, I mean, they, they did, well, from what I understand, the title track earned a Grammy for the best rock instrumental performance. How that happened, I have no idea. Rolling Stone listed this album as number 369 in the Rolling Stone 500 Greatest Albums of All Time. I can't argue with that. Heck, I might even rated it higher. But when I think of the police, I think of this record, and I think the quintessential police song is Message in a Bottle. Some people may argue with that, could be something else, but I think once they recorded that track, it was lightning in a bottle, <laughs> pardon the pun, but I think that's the perfect police song that would stand the test of time. Um, as far as the rest of this album, I think Stuart Copeland shines on this record. I know Sting was always against the doing it, uh, doing any Stuart Copeland songs because he thought Stuart was just too quirky, too gimmicky. Just he Sting wasn't really into Stuart stuff. Of course, that probably added to their battles in the studio and everything. But I think that I think Stuart's stuff on this really stands out. If anyone's listened to the Clark Kent stuff, which is what he produced like during the first album and it was released on green vinyl. If you like the Clark Kent, Stuart Copeland stuff, you'll like the material on this record or vice versa. If you like the material on this record, you'll like the Clark Kent stuff. And I would highly recommend anyone to go out and search the Clark for anything for Clark Kent. Um, but Message in the Bottle, I think is my number one track. Walking on the Moon, I would say is number two. Does everyone stare is brilliant because Stuart Copeland was re recording that in his house, doing a demo of it, playing the piano. And he got a radio signal came through and 
somehow that signal was able to get on the record head of his demo. Hmm. The funny thing is, if you listen to it, it's like an opera singer coming through and he per- comes in perfectly on pitch. So what they did is they took that demo that Stuart did with that opera singer part and they lay that down and then Sting sang the rest of it because it was just so perfect. The fact that this radio signal came in and was l- laid down on the record head, it's perfect. I, that's one of my favorite songs on the record. I love it. So I, I would rank that number three. But Any Other Days, another Stuart Copeland song which is very much in the vein of Clark Kent. So I think it's great. But anything, the whole record, I would have to say, because what I was saying last time, there's always some kind of filler on a police record. Well, on this record, I don't find any filler at all. I think it's top notch. I would rate it an easy five stars not four stars this is textbook police this laid the foundation for what was to come i would give this album five stars and i'm not saying this is my favorite record like i said before there's not a police album that is weak they're all great but this builds upon outlandos and takes to the next stage no filler on this record. All great performances. Andy Summers is absolutely brilliant because his he's not more he's more than a guitar player. He lays down these textures, yeah. soundscapes. Yes. That perfectly ties in with the record and it's as he keeps going his his artistry just keeps growing. Mm-hmm. But this album, he shines on it. Stuart shines. Easy five stars. Awesome. Easy, easy. Great, yeah. I mean, Excellent. can't argue with that at all. Thanks, Current. Awesome. Um, yeah. So Regatta de Blanc. This really is an excellent album. It's a little tricky for me because. Here's the thing. I think that it's probably a better album than the debut overall. I think that there's probably more filler on the first album. I do think the first album has better hits on it, though. For me personally, I think Can't Stand Losing You is probably better than any song on this album for me personally. But the well, deep that, tra- that- that track could have easily fit on this record yeah it fits sonically and the way it's written you know yeah and for me like i think roxanne i like more as a hit than i like message in a bottle even though i love message in a bottle so i think that the first album has better hits because i also love so lonely i probably like that more than anything on here but I think that this album has better deep tracks than the first al- album does. Mm-hmm. So I think that with the fact that the hits on here are still fantastic and the deep tracks are also better, I definitely think this is the better album. It's better produced. I think the instrumentation's more um, impressive on it. The arrangements are. I think Andy takes more of a forefront on this one than on the first record. He has those chords that are just, they just build such an amazing atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's almost kind of like, well, obviously I think that rush was really listening to the police a lot, but you think about some of those eighties rush albums, the way they have those chords that just really Mm -hmm. bring out such an atmosphere. You kind of get that with Andy summers playing and he was obviously a huge influence as was all these guys on rush when it comes to the 80s period of rush but um yeah i just think that this is a fantastic album um it's a darker feeling album for me than the first record it kind of has 
more of an intense feel a lot of the time to me a little more down tempo but not like down tempo but like darker more melancholy feel um heavier on the reggae for sure uh you have message in a bottle which is definitely a classic song like i said i think i prefer roxanne on the first album to it they kind of those songs kind of go hand in hand together for me as police hits i prefer roxanne a little bit but i think this one's probably just as good um and it's great lyrics i love the guitar riff on it and then Sting comes in with the bass and he just drives it. And, you know, it's just amazing stuff. Regatta de Blanc is badass. Such an amazing song. I think Sting especially shines on this one with his bass playing. He's just all over the place on this one. And Stewart sounds so good, too, on it. It's All Right For You, I like. It's one of the lesser tracks on the album for me. I don't know. It actually feels that song feels like it would fit very well on the first record. Yeah. Kind of has a little bit of that punky energy to it still, Um, which I think is still a great track. I think I would like it even more if it was on the first album, but I think that the vibe of this album overall is very different than that one. So it feels a little out of place for me on here. Death with, Oh, bring on the night beautiful song definitely has a reggae feel to it it kind of has like a solemn feel to it like Mm -hmm. with sting's vocal performance and andy's guitar chords just really gorgeous stuff on that song death wish is an intense song some great sting bass playing again and excellent stuff with um stewart on the drums and just great song it's really really intense and one of my favorites on the album walking on the moon is beautiful that one especially is what i was kind of talking about with andy's guitar playing those like rush sounding guitar chords on that one just gorgeous slow reggae on there but so much atmosphere to it i love that song it's another one of my favorites on here on any other day is another one of the lesser tracks on here for me along with it's all right for you i think it's a good song it's quirky i don't dislike it at all but it doesn't stand up to some of the other stuff on the album for me bed's too big without you oh my god i love this it's perfect jamming you have that awesome andy guitar riff that and then you have sting he comes in perfectly this one's just a great band effort it's one of the jammiest songs on the album they just all have such an amazing chemistry on this one and a great vocal performance by sting too i just might be my favorite song on this entire album because it's just like perfect chemistry here contact i love a lot especially for that sting bass riff that that's really like distorted nasty sounding bass it's just an intense sounding song i think does any everyone stares a much better stewart song on this album than on any other day um i think it's really quirky catchy sounding kind of has a little bit of that theatrical feel to it um just really good stuff there and then no time this time rocks out really hard too um if I had to rank the songs on this album, I would go with Bed Too Big Without You as my number one. Um, Walking on the Moon is number two. Death Wish is number three. Bring on the Night is number four. Message in a Bottle is five. Regatta de Blanc is six. Contact is seven. Does Everyone Stare is number eight. No Time This Time is nine. Um, It's All Right For You is 10. And then On Any Other Day is 11. And I would give this album a 4.75 out of five. So a little bit better than the debut. Um, I think that there's 
like I said, not really any filler. A couple tracks I don't like as much as the rest. I wouldn't call them filler, though. But it is really a quintessential album. I think it's better sounding than the first one. Um, overall, better songs, even though I like the hits on the first one more. Um, and I think you do really just start to hear what the police are going to become, even though they evolve over so much over the next few albums. I think that this they really did come into form here. Yeah. I can't Excellent. argue with that either. Cool. I but I do think it's a five-star record. Yeah, I could give it a five, but I don't know. I think that if I'm not going to give the first one a five, then I can't give this one a five because they're very close in quality for me. I enjoy them both thoroughly. See, I just see it that it's just like leaps and bounds, how they progress. Yeah, they definitely progressed. I just like them almost about equally. Mm -hmm. That first that. one's a special record to me. It's the one that got me into the police. Personally, there was this girl when I was in high school. She was in the... So I was into a lot of metal music, um, a lot of 80s rock. Like this is 80s, but I'm talking more like stadium 80s, rock. 80s yeah like stadium rock and stuff and she was not real impressed with that she was a good friend of mine so she started introducing me to all these bands like yes the police and the songs that she showed me by the police were all on that first record it was can't stand mm -hmm. losing you um so lonely and roxanne so the hits basically i actually did she did show me beds too big without you off a of regatta also um but so i really grew to love those hits a lot and that always made that album special to me that they were kind of the way i got into the band that was like the police that i grew to love before i even heard any of the other albums so yeah well when i was a kid I, the first album was my favorite. Nice. But as I've progressed, the album, I'm not going to say what that album is yet till we get to the end. But the album that I did not like at all became my favorite record. Nice. And we will talk about that when we get to the end. I already know which one it is, I think, just by that description. But I look forward to hearing it. But this was, Outlandus was my favorite record for years. But, yeah. you know, as you get older, sometimes things change. Then I realized the brilliance of the other record. Oh, yeah. I but think. Once they got to Regatta, thing, they were on fire, mm -hmm. I think. Definitely. I they think just kept refining things as they kept going. You've got the stuff on Outlandos, which was the germination. They just kept refining it, you know? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I mean, I think it's a more raw, I don't want to say amateurish because it's anything but amateur. The police never put out anything amateur, but in police terms, it was a little amateurish well the first and they didn't have a lot of money they i think they only spent like ten thousand pounds on it or something over the course of six months and it was miles copeland that was given them money to record it and that's amazing that it came out as good as it did because i think it's a really good sounding album it's okay but i think Stuart copeland's drums on the later albums sound much better that's fair yeah I think that um, even on this, on Regatta, you get a much bigger sound. Yes. From the well, band. Well, they throw a bit more money into it, you know? I the think first, that... The first album was successful, so they were able to, you know, that's how it works with all these bands. Yeah, they definitely. give them so much on their first album, but on the second one, well, we'll give them a little bit more money. You know, it gets better. Yeah. I think that 
that first album though was probably a very influential album to a lot of oh, people 100 percent. i mean genre like ska wouldn't be the same without that coming out you know just that mix of reggae and punk along with what yeah. the clash did i know that this didn't really have any horns in it at all because it was just the trio but if it did have horns on it it would be full-fledged ska basically on a lot of parts of that album but yeah i don't know it's they're both fantastic albums um i definitely think regatta's better even though i go back to the debut album more but i don't know they're both amazing, in my opinion. You never know what's going to happen, Ryan. As you get older, my, your everything changes. Definitely. Yeah, yeah mine's you... changed. This mine's changed. Uh, my favorite album by, and which I'll talk about what my favorite is, but mm -hmm. uh, it it's it's not what it was ten years ago. Definitely not. Yeah. And the first one I bought, well, the first one I received for Christmas when I was twelve with synchronicity um you know my opinion has changed on that over the years too so i remember synchronicity when it came out that definitely would be my album of the year of 1983 what a great record mm -hmm. but man when that came out i just played the shit out of it it's a great record i'm I was already studying a little bit on that one. I've spent a lot of time with that album, though, over the years. I mean, it's it's iconic. But we'll talk more about that one. Definitely. Oh, I forgot to mention my, my favorite three songs on this album, and, and I love all the songs on this album, but very similar to Ryan's, Bed's Too Big Without You is my favorite. Um, at one time, it was Regard de Blanc. Um, but now that'd probably be three. And number two would be Death Wish. But I mean, I don't even know what my favorite would be. I mean, no, no message in the bottom. No, I mean, maybe, maybe for the reason you don't like Roxanne as much. I mean, you mm -hmm. like it, but you don't need to hear it again. Yeah. I love Message in a Bottle, but it's not something, it's not one of my favorites. I mean, it's a great song, but I mean, it's, it's definitely not in my top three. That's how it is for me. I mean, I think it's an excellent song. But whereas Roxanne doesn't really get old for me, that one did get a little old. For yeah, me it doesn't get old on. for me. Well, all I know is you two are both wrong. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, no, I, that's fair. I mean, like I said, I prefer the hits on the first record. I'll stand by that. I think that that album... I mean, there's a reason why some of those hits were successful and these ones were not quite as successful, I think. Those, those songs in that first album, the hits are so catchy. They're like infectious. And I think it's, they almost had a brighter tone to them, even though it was a darker lyric on some of them. They had like a very catchy, fun sound to them. I do think that this record, pretty much everything on it, Regatta is darker sounding, which is good. I, I love it. But I think as hits, the first album's songs worked a little better. That's cool. Yeah. Definitely. Did yeah, you I guys probably, have... I'm probably more of a more of a fan of Roxanne than Message in a Bottle, even though I love them both. Yeah, well. Again, I know you're going. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> <laughs> but do you guys have any final points on these albums? Buy them if you don't have them. Absolutely. I'm good. I think I said everything, but go ahead, John. You got something to say? Say it. Oh, no, they're. Anything by the police, I would recommend. Um, both these um, both these albums are excellent, and as we all discussed here, for different reasons. But um, the police, they're one of the great bands. I mean, they didn't 
wear out their welcome. There was so much talent in this band. I mean, the whole was definitely greater than the sum of the parts you can with a lot of great bands. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they were the biggest band in the world and the best band, and and they went out at the perfect time. They went out and on top. They went out on top, and Sting's had a a long and very successful solo career and very successful critically early on. I I love the old the early Sting albums. And uh, Stuart Copeland and Andy Summers, I know they've done a lot of movie work and scores and things like that. I mean, yeah, excellent band, excellent musicians. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm looking forward to going through these other albums over the next couple of weeks with you guys. Um, but thank you for being on this episode. Grant, it's plug time. Oh, boy. Uh, Grants Rock Warehouse on YouTube and House is spelled H-A-U-S but if you do a search you can find it. whole bunch of crap coming down the pipeline uh, tomorrow night Peter Kerr and I on Rock Daydream Nation are doing like a joint venture where we are going to interview Prescott Niles from the NAC sweet looking forward to that that's uh, kind of like an outer body experience for me but yes we're doing that tomorrow um some other things i've been doing a matthew sweet series with todd Evans, and next week we're going to record uh matthew sweet inside versus uh, earth we're going to talk about those records in fact we're going to go through his whole catalog which will probably take a year but we're going to give it a shot and then next week, uh, we've got, well, actually, there's a couple of things coming up. In June, there's going to be an April wine show where we'll be looking at Harder Faster versus uh, Nature of the Beast, which are two of my favorite records. So I really going to have a tough time picking because I can't pick, but let's see what the panel says about that. And then the other thing that's coming up is bands that were successful in the 70s and how they entered the 80s did they enter the 80s successfully or did they have a little bit of a rocky road so we'll have a panel on that and we're going to be talking about that great well thank that's, you grant that's it in a nutshell awesome and john where where can people find you if they want to see some more of the music nut well, you can watch Grant's show, Grant's Rock Warehouse, or you can watch Ryan's Final Destination if you'd like to hear more of my off-kilter opinions on music. Um, I have stuff lined up with them, and I have a show on the Contrarian soon. We're going to discuss the Lou Reed oh. with Metallica album, Lulu. I will be on that. And I know I got some other things that I've filled with them that'll be coming on youtube soon uh so check them out awesome sweet that metallica one lou reed should be really an interesting discussion yeah definitely oh yeah i'll be looking forward to seeing what you, your thoughts are on that yeah i'm a lou reed fan who loves metallica so i've got well that'll be controversial just in itself right yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> And uh, so my channel, Ryan's Final Destination, it's also a Facebook and an Instagram. Um, so on the channel, we've got the Genesis series, which just ended a couple weeks ago. Grant was on there. Uh, Todd Evans and Rand Kelly. And then John Klaus made an appearance too. Uh, we went through all of the albums, uh, all the studio ones, and then quite a few of the live albums. We talked about them, our opinions and everything, just like we did on this episode today. And we also have been doing the same thing with Aerosmith. We just finished all the studio albums last week, and we'll be talking about some live albums upcoming in a couple weeks. And then we'll talk about the Joe Perry Project albums and some of the other solo albums and like top 10 songs. So 
there will be some more Aerosmith content coming out. Um, and we just did a video, Grant and uh, Peter Kerr from Rock Daydream Nation. We talked about Sly and the Family Stones album Stand and There's a Riot Going On. Um, you know, that's a decent amount of what we've done recently on the channel. And then on Facebook and Instagram, you can find written reviews, reels about albums I'm listening to, etc. And uh, you could also see some of the reviews that I write for Sea of Tranquility on there as well. And some other channels to check out, uh, Rock Daydream Nation, Rock Fantasy, The Contrarian, Sea of Tranquility, Rand Anthony Kelly, Bicycle Legs, Davies, M- M- Davies Cinema Flicks and Music Picks. Say that real um, fast. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. No, um, don't try it. What else do we have here? John Klauser's. Did you say John's channel? Yeah. My music corner. Okay. Um, And I think think that's, that's, I think that's it. I think that's about it. If not, I will add the other channels in the description. So make sure to read that too. Um, And like I said, thank you guys for coming on for this episode. Uh, On the next one, we will be doing Zenyatta and Ghost Ooh. in the Machine. And then oh, yeah. the third episode will be Synchronicity. This will be a short series, just like a short catalog from a band that knew where to hang it up. So they never even made close to a bad album. Um, and thank you guys for watching. Hope you all have a great night. Yeah, Thanks for having me, Ryan. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. It was excellent.